So today we will be doing a tutorial um, on a worm gear replacement for a Bell & Howell 1500 series projector. Uh, this particular model is a 1545 and as you can see the whole body is metal. Some of the 1500s were plastic. Uh, this one happens to be full metal. And I've already gotten started on some of it. I've gotten the back plate open, which is the first thing you'll need to do. And have a look and see. This is the main worm gear right there. You can see there's cracks in it, stress cracks. Uh, it still, still works, but for how long, uh, no one really knows. So we're going to be replacing that today. And I'm going to try to do my best to do a step-by-step. -step. Um, it won't be super technical as far as how I'm uh, talking about it. So I will do my best to uh, explain it as much detail as I can on how we're going to do that. So what we're going to want to do first thing is... We're going to be taking the, this back plate off partially. Um, this is the back of the projector. As you see, that's your audio amplifier. We'll be taking off the top piece, which uh, has the handle on it, and the front piece that houses the speaker and the leveling knob. As you see, that's the leveling knob, and there's a little notch there with a little set screw. Now, what you're going to want to do to get that set screw it's not a standard allen it's an ace light and it is a bristol um six flute i don't know if you can see that it's a six flute spline it's a special type allen key that you're going to want to use to take these out and there's multiple set screws and sizes for these bristol tools that you're going to need if you can see that that's the first thing you want to do to get it out. So I take that off and then this little uh, flat head here that houses the, the leveling foot that will want to come out. And if you look, you have a, I think it's a six millimeter. You want to take that piece out. That'll loosen the bottom of this front plate. And it'll be same thing for the back side. There'll be two bolts on the bottom. I just took the fitty off, footy off just so I could uh, get better clearance to get to that bolt. But there'll be two on the bottom as well. And there will also be a bolt on the front side of this that you'll want to take off. And then once you get this off, you'll want to disconnect uh, the speaker wires. Uh, what I normally do is I'll take a picture or I'll get this, the colored e-tape and I'll mark each position but as you see there's blue and orange for the speaker you disconnect those and like I said you can use your camera phone take a picture of it so you know this is a capacitor of some sort I think it's a startup capacitor and I'll disconnect that and then that leaves room to take this plate off So as you can see we got the front plate off and now we'll do is we'll take off the uh, take up the top next
And what I like to do is all the bolts that you take out, I like to put them in little jars, then mark them from where they were. Like these bolts will be in a little jar um, for the outside of putting the whole casing back together. So as you can see, that was two bolts. And uh, that's actually, those are five millimeter bolts that you want to take out. So we'll put that off to the side. All right, so you can see we got the outer part of the shell apart. Um, this side with the amplifier has a bunch of wires. Um, I usually don't need to take the amplifier off to take this whole piece off. I'll just kind of leave it off a little bit. And then uh, now you get a better look at what we need to do. Um, your best bet is uh, if you go to www.filmtech.com or Google it, they have service manuals. Um, usually any of the service manuals for the 1500 series if you're doing a 1500 or a 500 or a 2500 series you could uh, pull up a PDF and download it and then um, you can go through that and it'll explain some uh, disassembling and then reassembling it afterwards uh, it's, a lot of this is common sense you just have to uh, make good notations take pictures of what you're taking apart and uh, make it a lot easier when you go to reassemble it if you don't understand some of the language because in some of the manuals the language is really strange it's hard to understand you can understand some of it but not all of it so uh, that's what we need to do so what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, these white gear wheels off um, as you can see they're connected with these eclipse and what you could do is I usually take a screwdriver And pop them off and I lost that one but I'll get it later and what I like to do is I like to take these and lay them out on like a uh, towel in the order that they're supposed to go when they go back in as you can see all the uh, the old bell and howl lubrications in there it's all dried up and it's splattered everywhere so um, that's the first wheel we take off the next wheel we're gonna take off this uses a, um, a C-clip. It has uh, two holes. Um, they have special tools you could buy to remove those. Um, these channel locks, as you can see, those have the little uh, pins at the top where you put them into the E-clip hole. And uh, like I said, this one has like a type of spring on it. Sometimes they come off easy and sometimes they don't. So that one I got partially off. What I like to do I found an easier way to take this off. I get it at least partially loose because this has like a type of spring washer that keeps tension on the wheel. I'll slowly ease it off with a flathead and pop it off. And that is the that is the curved like spring tension washer. And just remember that goes on before the E-clip. And then there's also another washer here, which will probably stay on. So there you go. put that off to the side take this piece will just slide right out it's a little U retaining clip take that out and then this gear just pops right out and I dropped it so that's that gear you can see the notches in it That'll fit right on the upper sprocket wheel. There's notches in that. When you go to put it back together, it'll fit right on there. So we'll keep them off to the side. And then we'll take this other gear wheel off. 
which also has an E-clip. And there you go. So I'll keep those in order off to the side. And that's your first step. This little uh, bar here, uh, you won't need to take that off. It's not connected to anything except for the, the main chassis of the uh, projector. So that could stay on. So next step, what I want to do is, you see that here, those are motor mounts. Those hold the drive motor in. And there's a flathead screw on this side, which you loosen up. There'll be a nut on the back side. Sometimes it'll stay in position, sometimes it'll turn. You just put your finger in the back. Loosen this up as much as you can. And there you go. That's one side, and then we'll do the other side and loosen that. And there you go, both sides are now loose. Okay, so we have both motor mounts loose. And we have some play because what we need to do now is get to the very bottom. And it's hard to see, but there's an 8mm bolt. And it'll be the same as the top one that I'm pointing at right here. Right there. And then there's another one there. So there's four of these bolts. And there's one at the bottom. So we need to take those four bolts out, and that'll take the entire chassis mechanism that holds all the gearing, the upper lower sprocket, and then the main worm gear. So two upper and two lower, which I can't really get a good shot of with the camera, but they're down there, and you'll see them. They connect the whole chassis. So we'll go ahead and get an 8 millimeter and take those out, and um, it's kind of tricky for the bottom ones, especially the one on the left-hand side. That's by the sound drum wheel. But I get an extension with an 8 millimeter. And you'll need some long needle nose pliers. These will definitely be helpful to get into spots you can't get your hand in. And there's one bolt. That is the motor mount. Uh, excuse me, not the motor mount, but the chassis bolt. That's what's going to hold. That's what we're going to do to take out the entire chassis so we can get to the worm gear and disconnect it. And like I said, I like to put these in jars so I know where they're at. You don't lose them. And the next one's going to be real tricky, and we'll get to that step next. So we're going to get to the second lower bolt, um, and if you, you can see from the camera, here's the drum wheel. Now, there is, um, if you see, there's four holes in the drum wheel, and at the very bottom bolt, um, you actually cannot get underneath this motor here with your long extension, 8 millimeter to get to that bolt. So what you need to do is if you look at that bolt and then out here you can see it's hard to tell but there's three flathead screws that hold this whole sound drum mechanism together. So what you need to do is not completely take those out. You want to loosen them up. Um, what I like to do is mark them around the outside edges at least one 
take a sharpie mark it kind of have a position to where when you loosen your sound drum wheel this whole unit slides forward or backward a little bit just enough to get in there to get your eight millimeter in there to loosen that uh, chassis bolt so if you So there's a little bit of play, if you can see. So that should give you enough room to get your 8mm socket in there to loosen that lower bolt. Alright, so unfortunately that's not working out. So if you could see, see if I can get a position there. It's behind this wheel, but the bolt is so tight that I'm not going to be able to get to it the way I wanted to, which was sliding this this wheel. You see the play in it, and getting my eight millimeter through that hole to get to the bolt. So what we need to do is there's an E-clip, and this is really a pain to put back on later, but. And some of these, if the bolts are so tight and you can't get your socket in there properly, you need to take this E-clip out and pop this wheel out. Now, sometimes you can't get the wheel out, so then you'll have to loosen these motor mounts on the transformer, which will be two bolts right there. If you could see, and then there's two bolts on the other side for the other side, and get that loosened up so you can pop out this uh, sound wheel. So that is what we're going to be uh, doing so we can get to that lower bolt for our worm gear, which is right there. That's the lower bolt we need to get to. So we have the transformer loose, as you can see. Got movement, and then we'll have play to get in there and get that E-clip out. So we'll do the same thing. Um, best bet is get a flathead to reach in there make sure it's magnetized or you could take a piece of towel paper put it underneath there so you don't lose the clip it doesn't fall down somewhere where you can't find it but uh, I use a magnetized flathead get the clip Clip is out. This wheel sometimes sometimes it has a hard time sliding it out. So this is the washer that I got off that goes um, over the sound drum end and then the E-clip will go back on there as we put it back together later. So that should give you enough play. This a little bit of a movement and to get it off. And I forgot in the 1500 series, um, unlike the 2500s, This one you have two choices either you loosen the bottom mounts on this motor here which is the main motor down in here they're kind of a pain to put back in or you could loosen those flathead screws I told you about that hold on the entire drum because you have to get the wheel off so you can get to to that lower bolt because I can't slide the drum wheel off the motors in the way unlike the 2500s where you actually don't have to take these all off uh, to get the the sound wheel off so there'll be three of those flatheads
So I actually didn't have to take the lower motor mount off. I had enough play taking the three bolts, the three flathead bolts out of the sound drum. So I could loosen it. Uh, like I said, these bolts that hold this uh, worm gear chassis on can be very, very tight from the factory. But that's the lower one from the uh, front side. And go ahead and put that off to the side. Uh, now we're going to do the top two. And what you'll want to do is at least get the belts slid off. Um, do the top two next. And what I like to do is I like to mark this with a sharpie so I know exactly the exact position it was on after I loosen them. And before we go ahead and take off those top two bolts, you're going to spin the projector around. There's this little uh, this little shroud cover that uh, covers your belt and your uh, pulley wheel. So you're going to want to take that off. And then these 1500s, that's not an 8. Must be a 6. As you can see, that holds the lamp, and then that's the cover for the uh, pulley wheel. There's the belt. Okay, so now you're all free in here. Once this whole chassis comes out, there'll be nothing in the way. It should just pop right out. So, spin the projector back around, and we'll do the top two bolts. And there you go, those are the four bolts that hold the worm gear chassis in place. And now, sorry guys, I'm trying to get good camera shots for you. It's not the best. And there's a little spring attachment at the bottom, so I forgot to loosen it first. And then this slides in to right here. So there you go. You have your whole chassis out. And that's what we're going to disassemble and uh, change the worm gear in. Alright, as we're looking at our chassis, there's a heat shield on here. You're going to want to take those off. And I want to say they're 6 millimeter or quarter inch. So there'll be four bolts holding that on.
put that off to the side with its bolts. All right, there you go. And then there's another little aperture plate here that comes off as well. It should be the same size. There you go. There's your three claw. There's your shutter blade pulley wheel. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this pulley wheel. Uh, just remember. This is, uh, you need the special Bristol, uh, the Ace Light Bristol 99 series. Um, this is, uh, the tool number on this one is a 66N, as in neither. Um, it's a six flute spline. Uh, just so you know, when you take these off, these set screws are really tight. Be careful, don't break your, uh, your wrench, otherwise you're screwed. And, for example, this one's super tight. Got it. There's two set screws. Loosen them partially. Enough to slide the pulley wheel off. There you go. And when you go to reassemble this, um, you'll see those set screws are really tight. They left marks on the shaft. So as long as you're in the general area, it should line up with your belt when you put it back on. But that's the pulley wheel, two set screws. So next thing you're going to want to do is there's this little nut right here. Take a pair of pliers and uh, take that piece off. As you can see, there's two sides to it. There's a little flange on that end, no flange on this end. So the flange end will go in here. Ooh. And you can see there's a little hole in the shutter blade, and there's like a little uh, a nub or a pin. When that goes back on, that, that'll fit right into that little hole into the shutter blade. And then the nut with the flange end will go inside of that. And as you can see, this will have to be cleaned as well because there's a bunch of the old lubrication in it. So we'll put that off to the side. And as you can see, there is a lot of gunk in there. And uh, we're going to end up taking all that out. Um, and have that all cleaned up and I usually use uh, denatured alcohol or acetone and uh, just we'll get into more on how to clean it and and get it ready for reassembly after we change the worm gear out all right so our next step is you're going to take the cam follower out which is this piece right here and as you can see the little square notch in the back that always faces towards the cam follower uh, wheel um, and then that little groove will show you it sits into the wheel that's in the back behind the spring you can't see it right now but that's the front end with the lower um, rectangular notch that'll be the front facing you this will be the inside, which will be, this notch will be sitting in a little notch that's on this wheel here. So, take that off, that'll need to be cleaned. And then the in and out bracket, which is right here, that's held on by two flatheads on each end. I'm going to take that off. And then the whole uh, shuttle arm assembly 
comes out, make sure you don't lose your little three claw shuttle. As you can see, that'll need to be cleaned. It's filthy. Make sure you do not lose that. Oh, and also I want to remind you from my f initial beginnings of doing this. If you look at it, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, uh, you can see the the teeth up here kind of go upward. That's going to be facing exactly like it was when it came out. Be careful you don't have it upside down like that. That's right side up. And you can see there's a little beveled ends on each side. Those will be facing down. Pull this off. And these slide out. Like that. And then there's your little shuttle wheel. And as you can see, there it's, those are just stuff everywhere. So those will be cleaned with a denatured alcohol or acetone either. And here's the wheel. You can see right there, there's a notch. And that'll fit in the notch when we go to put it back together. It's very important that that stays inside that notch like that. And there's also a notch here, which will be on the inside, and that'll fit onto the shaft. You'll see there's a notch on the shaft as well. Now, if you look on the inside, there is a C-clip in there. You want to use your plier, those special pliers I told you. You can buy them at any Harbor Freight or online from Amazon, even eBay. Uh, you'll need to get your little pliers in there. And uh, you'll have to depress the ring and pop it out so that'll loosen the shaft. And I'll show you that when we get to it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take apart this lower sprocket wheel, which is held on by two set screw screws, which you'll need your Bristol uh, wrench to do that. So our lower sprocket wheel is off. As you can see, that'll need to be cleaned as well. And there you have it. Now you have access to getting to your... Uh, worm gear to get it off. Now for people that haven't done this before, uh, I did a little example. Get a little piece of uh, some acrylic uh, paint and a little brush and kind of mark it. That's kind of the general area you want the end of the uh, worm gear shaft to be at. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to loosen the, these two screws here which hold in the little, uh, the little uh, turning washer. That I don't know what it's exactly called but you're going to pop these two bolts off so we can get some uh, some play and then we'll loosen the worm gear and start replacing it and these two little bolts are also five millimeter in a jar so they don't get lost and misplaced. Now you'll have two set screws for the worm gear and just so you know when you get the new worm gear they don't give you the set screws so you want to take these completely out. Do not lose them. You will need them to put back inside your new worm gear. And I like to put a little bit of synthetic grease on the ends, just of, I mean, uh, in the threads, just a touch, not a lot. Now, before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and get off uh, our little C-ring here, which you'll need your special channel lock pliers. And there's a setting on here. Uh, there you go. That's to depress 
the ring. And that's out. So now we got freedom to play with here. Sometimes they don't want to pop out smoothly. So what I like to do is I'll take a little hammer and a screwdriver in and just give it a tap. Loosen it up. And before I forget, that's your little uh, loop restore system right there. That also has a set screw. Um, that is a different version. So if you buy the the kit of Ace Light Bristol Tools, that's that one there. And you want to loosen that little set screw, not all the way out, just enough to free up the little follower. All right. And of course, it's being stubborn. Sometimes they pop out really easy, and sometimes you got to give them a little persuasion. And there you go. All right. So that's on the other end of the shaft, has bearings in it, a lot of grease on it, and uh, we'll have to go ahead and clean that as well. All right, there is your bad worm gear off. And uh, unfortunately there was so much gunk that I lost my marking, but we'll get to that later. You'll be able to get the right position for when you put the new worm gear off on. And slide the little loop restore uh, notch that will have to be cleaned as well. And then there's your shaft. So that's held on by a C-clip as well. Um, that'll be clean because there's a lot of the old uh, bell and hollow lubrication in it. So put that off to the side. You really don't have to take off the upper sprocket, but as you can see, this one will need to be cleaned because it's filthy. So I'll do my best because it's already set, and we'll get that cleaned and get to putting on the new worm gear. So we got everything clean. Worm gear chassis is all clean. Got all the old gunk out. Clean the, the aperture plate and the gate. There was a bunch of lubrication in there. And then here's the new worm gear we're gonna install. It's a new aluminum once. So as you can see, chassis is now cleaned. Uh, got rid of all the old lubrication, including the aperture plate. There's a little spot there I'm gonna clean up. But uh, what it looks like when it's all cleaned and here we have the new aluminum worm gears uh, all solid aluminum so those are pretty looking pretty sweet and then also when you buy the worm gear you get a new uh, felt tip which you will need and a new uh, felt that goes inside the spring that holds the shuttle arms so you get a new one of those so we're going to go ahead and get those prepped and continue on replacing the worm gear. All right. So what you want to do first is your little loop restore. That's going to go back on. And if you can't probably see in the camera, but there's a little notch from where the set screw was. What I like to do is I try to get it back in the same area. And sorry, made a mistake. So the shaft needs to go in first. And then the loop restore 
shuttle will go in as well and just leave that loose and then And then you want to put a little bit of uh, lubricating grease on it, not a lot. That way the new uh, the worm gear should slide on. And then your little bearing goes to the front. Whoops. couple taps so the shaft is just barely coming out of the bearing and as you can see that's as far as that bearing the bigger bearing on the end of the shaft goes in on that side so you're gonna want to look for your little uh, a little mark for this loop restore shuttle. That looks about right. There's a flat end on the on the shaft itself where the shuttle kind of sits in and then that's where the set screw will take uh, take a little bite down. You don't have to over tighten them. Give it a good snug. And that's that. All right. I can see my little notch. You probably can't see it on the camera. But I can see where my set screws were originally on the shaft from the old worm gear. So you kind of want to just give it a guesstimation. Right there. Bingo. Alright. So now we'll get the set screws from the uh, the old worm gear and go ahead and uh, we'll uh, tighten those down and then uh, we'll go ahead and put the lower sprocket um, like I said I cleaned it pretty well because I was able to take it off you don't have to be perfect but same with the upper one and then uh, after we tighten down the worm gear we'll go ahead and put the lower sprocket wheel on get that tightened down and then start building the shuttle arms and uh, put the blade uh, the shutter blade back on and the flywheel or the pulley wheel and then we'll uh, see where we're at all right uh, another thing I forgot to mention don't forget to put your uh, it's a little stop plate that holds the uh, bearing in on the end of the shaft on this side and uh, I realized that earlier when I was tapping it out um, I damaged this bearing it's hard to see using the hammer so fortunately I had some uh, new old stock available so you want to be careful not to hit that inner bearing because it won't spin it won't glide properly going that way because it's all bent in so uh, if anything you hit the inner part of the bearing which is heavy duty metal and uh, this part of the bearing is where the bearing uh, ball bearings are at that keep it spinning so just be careful when you tap it out. Best bet is just tap it at the shaft. And usually this will be attached to the shaft and it will pop out. So I got a little careless and damaged it. But fortunately I had a, a newer piece. New piece to install it. So next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the lower sprocket on. And what you want to do, whether you're lefty or righty, um, the outer sprocket wheel, which is here, you want to hold that depress it make sure it's tight as you're sliding this on 
press it down should be pretty close to being flush on there and then you're going to want to go ahead and tighten those set screws down um, if you don't depress the outer lower sprocket and push up on it then it'll be the sprocket wheel on the outside of the uh, chassis will be out of alignment Right, and there we have it. Spinning pretty nice. Um, as you can see, this is the little L bracket for the uh, looper store. So that is kind of a key. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that on camera. The little L bracket moving. So that is your loop restore there. So if you look in the manual. There's an actual uh, distance it needs to be away from the actual loop shuttle. And looking at it right now, it's kind of far away. So um, according to the manual, I think it's 0 .015 is the distance that that L, uh, that loop restore L bracket needs to be away from the actual shuttle, which is right inside there. I can see it's kind of off. So... Um, what you could do is online you can buy this thing called a feeler gauge um, it's usually for automotive and they have the different sizes in there that you'll want to slip the feeler gauge inside there to get the exact measurement of how far the L bracket needs to be away from the, uh, the loop shuttle so I'm gonna dig out the uh, feeler gauge and then we'll go ahead and do a quick measurement on that before we finish putting it together Alright, so this is a feeler gauge. It's made by OEM Tools. You'll probably buy it at Amazon. And like I said, according to the manual, here's a point zero one five. And we'll go ahead and take a measurement. And as you can see, it's it's a little bit off. So what you want to do is you'll re-loosen your set screw on your loop restore shuttle and we're going to slide it move it a little bit closer That looks pretty close. Alright, next thing we want to do is take our little C ring and our special tool. We're going to go ahead and uh, put that bad boy in there. Make sure it's flush to the bearing, so the bearing's locked in there. Good. And then next thing we're going to want to do, take your little shuttle wheel and your in and out follower, and there's a little spring on it. Just be careful, don't bend it or tweak it a little bit, otherwise you'll be screwed. go ahead and put that on and make sure the little notch on the back of that wheel fits in the little notch on the shaft
I'm going to go ahead and take two uh, flathead screws and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten down the uh, in and out follower. So for people that are doing this first time, you know, a lot of this is uh, it's trial and error. It took me close to four months to do one projector. A lot of it uh, was spending time getting the timing and the adjustments down, which at first it was a royal pain. But uh, uh, as I figured out my method... Um, you don't need all the special tools and jigs. Um, they would be nice to have, but you can't really find them anywhere. So, like I said, this is all going to be trial and error for people that are doing it at first. Um, you're going to go ahead and take your spring now. You're going to put your felt piece in there that you got. And then you're going to get your two shuttle arms, which are these. As you can see, we cleaned them. And... Uh, there's these little grooves here in the in and out follower that they're going to fit in. And then your little uh, three claw shuttle. And like I said, the little beveled ends will face down. And we went ahead and we took a wire brush and we uh, cleaned all the, the gunk and junk off of this so it's nice and clean. Um, there's these little grooves at the end of the shuttle arms that it will sit perfect. And of course I forgot to put in the felt first. So take the shuttle arms back out. Let's get our new felt. And here's our new felt. Make sure the notch is facing towards the uh, the wheel. Slide those up. If you don't put the felt on first, you won't be able to get it on. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Now we'll go back to what we're doing. Slide it through the cam follower. Alright, just remember it takes a little bit of patience, so don't get frustrated if you have to walk away, take a break. 
So as you remember, as we said before in the video, this notch will lay inside the notch that's on the the wheel. Make sure the felt doesn't get trapped in there. Takes a little persuasion. Let's lift the felt up, make sure we are in the notch and we're not all the way down. So as you can see, it's not all the way into that notch. Once it's into the notch, they should both turn. There we go. So your, uh, your claw shuttle should fit perfect. It should be just the middle claw should be lined up with the middle of the aperture opening. And then you're going to go ahead and put your little spring on that goes above the felt. There's some uh, little notched ends on the shuttle arms. And then they hook right in. Bingo. And there you have it. That's looking pretty good right now. And then what I like to do is take a little bit of oil, a couple drips into the, uh, the felt spring. Not a lot. Don't overdo it. Now we are ready to put the uh, the shutter blade on. So it's a three blade shutter, but what I need to do is I need to clean this first because I forgot to clean it earlier. So get that all cleaned up and then we'll install that. And then put the uh, pulley wheel on and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do the test that I normally do before I actually put it back into the projector itself, this entire chassis. So I'm gonna give this a clean. Alright, as you can see, we cleaned our three blade shutter. Uh, and if you look, you know, this is the back side of it. Um, some of them you'll see it, there's like a little piece of felt that's either, I think it's glued on to this shutter. Um, I can see the indentations from the old shutter and where it needs to line up to. And then the little notch up here and then the hole. So the little hole that's in the shutter is going to line up with the notch that's on the outside of this. Uh, this cam wheel. So we're going to go ahead and put that on as that. And be very careful with these shutters. They're really thin. They will bend easily. So just be careful when you're cleaning them and putting them back on. Do not bend them. And you could probably bend them back into place if it's not too bad, but if you bend it extremely bad, it's going to start hitting stuff and you're going to have a whole bunch of problems. So you want to make sure you do not bend that. So we're going to take our little uh, weight and make sure the indentation sits in properly. And then your nut with the flange will go in.
Now make sure that nut, the flange, sits inside this gold little uh, plate that we're putting it on, that we're tightening it down to. It should, the nut should fit flush, flush against that. Um, sometimes when you screw it, you have to play around with this plate and make sure that the nut actually, the flange part, goes all the way inside. Otherwise, it's going to come loose while you run the projector, and then you're going to have to take it all out and reset it. So we'll go ahead and snug it up. And as you can see on the shutter wheel, there's a little notch on one of the holes that lines up with the set screw on the in and out follower. That's where sometimes you may have to use your uh, Bristol tools and do an adjustment for timing and uh, for your shuttle timing. Usually there's good chances that sometimes you don't need to mess with it. I've had to mess with it on occasion. Um, but we're trying to get this without getting too in-depth on the timing part of it because... Yeah, it's critical, but there's sometimes you can do these worm gears and have really minimal adjustments to do. And when we get to uh, the adjustment part, I'll show you a, a pretty pretty easy thing that'll tell you if your timing's off before you put this chassis unit back into the projector. Um, so, back to what we were doing. So, we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and put the... Uh, pulley wheel on. Like I said, just give them a snug. You don't have to over crank them because you can break the tool and occasionally strip out the set screw. Alrighty. Well, there you go. There is your worm gear. So far, so good. Turning motion's good. Bingo. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of lubrication on the actual worm gear itself. Uh, the whole issue with the bell and house back in the day, there's all kinds of opinions on it. My opinion is, is uh, that when these a lot of these projectors went through the school systems, that the aluminum core of the actual worm gear and then the nylon plastic that went around it, uh, there was a lot of, when the heat builds up in the projector, a lot of the expansion and contraction of it, along with the lubrication, caused it to crack and uh, fall apart. So, I don't know. I mean, everybody's got their own opinions on it. That's what I think happened to them. But now that these new aluminum worm gears are out, this thing will probably outlast your life. So uh, they're pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and lubricate it, and then we're going to do our little uh, timing test. And see uh, see how we are. See how we're looking as far as the adjustments go. All right. So the lubrication I use it's uh, made by SuperTech. It's a multi-duty uh, extreme pressure high temp grease. Uh, I feel it's it's good stuff. It works. They use them in the cars, and I feel it. This will work great for the lubrication of the gears. You don't need a lot of it, so I get a little uh, swab. And then go ahead and run it through a little bit. And you don't want to lose a, use a lot of this. I mean, uh, give it a little decent coat. I mean, it's going to sling a little bit. But if you use too much, it'll sling a lot, and it'll get all over the inside of the projector. And we don't want to get 
it all over the place. I mean, it's you, there's no way around it. It's going to sling. So. All right. So far, so good. All right, for our timing test, I'd like to get some uh, some countdown leader, some uh, so we could see how it's. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and thread up the mechanism, and we're gonna see how it lines up with the aperture plate, and if it trips uh, the loop restore. So that that's how I usually do my testing. So we'll go ahead and. Uh, So with the lens holder facing to you, we go, went ahead and threaded up our piece of leader. And then you're going to look inside. And So if you look inside through the aperture plate, you'll see your countdown numbers, and they look like they're lined up. It's not tripping our loop restore, which is a really good sign. And you just keep keep turning the uh, pulley wheel and keeping an eye on it. I don't hear the loop uh, tripping. The loop restore is not tripping, and our frames are lined up pretty good through the aperture plate. So I think we're good. So as far as adjusting goes, I think uh, I think we're good to go. I'm going to take a chance and go ahead and put it back in. Uh, like I said, if the if the timing adjustment was off, you'd hear the loop restore tripping. And not hearing the loop restore trip, so so far so good. The framing looks like it's right in the aperture plate. Once you get in the projector, turn it on. You may have to mess with your framer knob, which is up here, to get the adjustment of the framing. Um, but other than that, I think it's good to go. And usually if something was off, you'd hear, you'd also hear issues with the, uh, the claw protrusion. If, if it's too far in, it's not grabbing the film. If it's too far out, I mean, if it's too far in, it's grabbing the film too much and causing the looper store to hit. And if it's too far out, it's not grabbing at all the film. But as I'm looking through the aperture plate here, it looks like uh, everything's pretty good. So, sometimes you get it on the money and sometimes you don't. Like I said, my first projector took me four months to get the timing right and figure out exactly what was wrong and reading the manual over and over. So, uh, that's pretty much how you get the worm, worm gear installed and you get your kind of your timing down. Uh, yeah, there may be problems arise after you put it in, you don't know. Um, but as of right now, before it's in the projector, I'm pretty pretty much sure that pretty sure that the timing and the adjustments are proper. So um, the test will be putting in the projector, 
double check make sure everything's nice and snug because if there's a loose bolt somewhere on the shutter on the shutter blade or anywhere in the shuttle arms you get some wow and flutter in the picture and then you have to pull it all out and do it again uh, I've been through it my first couple projectors now I kinda have a system on how I do it and this is my system so hopefully it helps out uh, you can get your worm gears at Urbanski Film Supplies um, he's got the aluminum worm gears uh, and all kinds of other supplies and you want to get your ace light bristol set that's going to help you with the set screws because standard allens won't work and uh, that's pretty much it and you know i'll try to answer questions as much as i can and pretty much this whole thing is a trial and error and it took me a while but i got it down and yeah problems arise later on we have to fix them but for now i think we're good to go so I'll eventually slap this in the projector for the customer and test it out. I like to run features on it uh, for a couple days, keep it running, see how everything's working. And after, if it all checks out, it's good to go. So hopefully this helps out for some people that are interested in doing it. It's not for everybody. Um, also remember, when you do a worm gear, more than likely, if they don't have a new motor belt in, you want to get a belt. That's also available at Urbanski Film Supplies. You can find them online. Um, and that's it. So thank you for watching, and I hopefully this helps out some people out there that are interested in doing their own. Otherwise, uh, you can get a hold of me, and uh, I'm on the 16 uh, millimeter film collector on Facebook, and I'll probably be posting this to YouTube. Uh, if you, I won't give my email out, but if you're on Facebook, you can direct message me if you want me to replace your worm gear and get your projector running. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate it. Bye.